Welcome to the weekly weather briefing brought to you by the National Weather Service for the week of August 10th. For this week we're looking at hot weather for the first three days with a threat of thunderstorms which we'll discuss a little bit more about. On Thursday temperatures will still be warm but there's going to be a cold front going through the area that is expected that it will bring thunderstorms to more of a widespread area. Uh, some of these thunderstorms could potentially be strong. And then Friday through Monday, the weather will be markedly different with cool, breezy conditions and generally dry weather over the area. Currently, on Monday afternoon, we have a number of red flag warnings out that are in effect through Monday evening. Some of the warnings in southern Washington and northeast Oregon are actually in effect all the way through, through Tuesday evening. And these are for the potential for abundant lightning and our dry fuels, the com combination which could lead to more wildfire starts. For this, this afternoon and this evening, we're expecting thunderstorms to move from Oregon and southern Idaho into the inland northwest area. Uh, there's a couple of different scenarios as to how this could play out. I'm showing you a computer forecast of how the radar might look around 4 o'clock this afternoon, showing the convection in southeast Washington and in the southern panhandle. And then on the next slide, we're seeing the convection move all the way up into the central panhandle and uh, east central Washington. With these kind of thunderstorms, we would expect that they're mostly going to have lightning and gusty winds with them, not expecting to see a lot of heavy rain or hail, and I'm just showing you a computer forecast of what the gusty winds might look like <clears throat> with the uh, the potential for strong gusty winds and some blowing dust associated with those storms. And then later in the evening uh, we could see those thunderstorms moving up into northeast Washington as well as more thunderstorms moving up from Oregon into the Washington Cascades. Again, this is a computer forecast, not guaranteed to be right. It's just one scenario that I've shown you. Here is four more forecasts from four different computer programs. And that these are all valid at 5 o'clock this afternoon. And you can see that they all have different amounts and location exact of the convection that we're expecting. But pretty much most of them are in agreement in that the central and southern panhandle have the best chance of thunderstorms. Uh, whether they move into western Montana or more into eastern Washington is part of the bigger question. And then I showed you some of the other thunderstorm convection that's going to be developing over central Oregon, and that will move up into central Washington later in the evening. So just to kind of summarize all those different forecasts, the best chance of seeing some strong thunderstorms with some potential damage would be over the central panhandle, a lesser chance, but still a chance extending into extreme eastern Washington as well as into western Montana. And then uh, for thunderstorms for Tuesday and Wednesday, these are mostly going to be over the mountainous areas as I'm showing you here on the screen. Uh, there's a chance that some of those could move off of the mountains and over a valley or a basin location, but in general the thunderstorm activity is going to be pretty much anchored over the mountains. The main threats again with lightning and gusty winds. And as I said, the temperatures on Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be rather hot. This is Wednesday's forecast maximum temperatures and you can see triple digits over much of the area. <clears throat> Thursday we have a cold front that's going to move through the area. It's a potential classic weather pattern for a strong widespread thunderstorm event. There are some similarities to the events we saw in 2014 during the summer, uh, but not everything aligns perfectly with them, so I don't mean to give the impression that, that it's going to be a repeat for sure. The biggest threats would be, again, the strong damaging winds, blowing dust, and lightning fires start lightning ignited wildfires. It's still too early to have any kind of uh, exact details on the strength and timing location of this kind of event. There's still a lot that needs to come together in order for it to, to uh, pan out and just exactly where and when it would happen is still in doubt. So we will likely be updating this slide set and briefings uh, with possibly a, a live briefing on Wednesday. 
And then after the cold front goes through, we're going to have wind gusts uh, 30 to 40 miles an hour in the wake of that on Friday. It's going to be a rather cool, much cooler and breezy and blustery day for uh, our Friday across the inland northwest. And this is just a graphic to kind of summarize what we've been talking about that uh, for Spokane and, and anywhere else in the inland northwest is going to be a similar pattern where Wednesday is going to be the hottest day followed by market cooling for Friday and the weekend and the best chances of precipitation are going to be for Thursday and Thursday night. The 8 to 14 day outlook continues to show above normal temperatures along the western coast and below normal precipitation over much of the northwest. As always, follow us on our website or on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube and we thank you for your attendance on this briefing.